Hi, Ask an RDC here, and in this video, we'll be talking about two things that weren't told to me by my recruiter, which probably should have been told to me, but were probably just overlooked, and I'm sure other people have been told their recruiters this, but my recruiter didn't tell me, and that was duty days and watch standing. Now, I'm sure some of you that are looking to join the Navy or those who are already in the Navy were probably hearing this right now and saying, yeah, of course, the Navy stands the watch. That's how this works. But honestly, it was not described to me, and those of you who are about to join probably know, know how in-depth this actually goes. So let's first talk about watch standing. Now you'll start doing watch standing in boot camp, and your watch could be something that either between five hours long, two hours long, one hour long. It really depends on what rotation you are, what time of day it is. Because in boot camp they'll have usually have like around five hour watches during the day, four to five hour watches, and then they'll do like two hour watches or one hour watches at night, depending whether or not you're in Pearl Harbor or you're starting your normal training. Because at first you're pretty tired, and this is more of an introductory when you're in Pearl Harbor. But after that, you'll start doing normal watch standing. There's a few that you'll do. So there's always a watch standard whenever the division is inside. So you can see in this picture here, you can see recruits behind this recruit. Who This recruit is standing either security watch or roving security watch. I can't really read the badge. But there's always going to be two watch standards. And those are the ones that are pretty much just walk, watching the door. And then the other one walks around the compartment and then reports to the quarter deck hourly. And that might change when you get there. It might be every two hours or once uh, rotation. But in short, it's your job to challenge every time, uh, like those videos you'll see when the RDCs walk in or someone walks in that staff, and you'll see them pop to attention just like this recruit does, and they'll sound off. And like I said, during the day, they're going to be about four hours, and then at night, it's two hours just so you make sure that everyone gets a good amount of sleep so that way you can continue all training throughout the day. Another one that you'll see, like I said, is the roving security watch, and you might have to go report to the quarter deck. Every hour, every two hours, every four hours, it depends. It, it changed while I was there, but while it's there, it, regardless, during the time, they're still doing it now. And they're reporting to the quarter deck. And we'll talk about the quarter deck here in a second. While you're doing that, you're going to stop by maybe some gauges or maybe take some temperatures or anything like that. And then you have to report those. And what you can see in this recruit's hand is a log. Now, almost every watch station has a log. This one's the roving security log. And this is the one where they record each hourly tour or rove is what it's called and they check these dials. Now these dials obviously are fake, but it's supposed to simulate real life. Boot camp gets you ready for the fleet. So when you're reporting, you report over to the quarter deck and you can see here, there's another recruit standing watch. You report to them, there are times uh, every hour or four hours, whatever it is for the time when you get there, but you're gonna report to them. But they themselves are also another watch stander at boot camp, similar to what would be at the fleet, which is the quarter deck. And then the quarter deck, which we'll get into when we talk about fleet watches, is where you enter and exit a ship. It's the main ceremonious area. They too are standing watch, and this is a ship watch. So they're going to track any recruits that come in and out, challenge any petty officers or chiefs, officers, anyone staff really that's come in and out as well. And they too keep a log, and they also, you can't really see it here, but there's a phone there as well. So anytime anyone's calling that's not calling directly to an RDC or something, you're going to answer it, just like you would if you were an OOD on a ship. And that's the whole point. Boot camp's supposed to prepare you for a fleet. So moving on to here, you can see there's two watch standards usually. You got this guy standing here, and there's usually going to be a second one standing next to him. You see some pictures of it online as well. And every once in a while, they have to go on robe as well, but someone still has to man the quarter deck, so they send this guy. And this guy's going to go around. He's going to do, you see, he's holding a sign. It's called temperature check. And the whole point is that you're not really supposed to communicate or, you know, you know no recruit to recruit contact. The whole idea is that if you sit there and you knock on the door or be loud, try to say temperature check, okay, that's kind of weird during the day, but it's even worse at night. So they just hold up the sign. It just makes it way easier. And then you'll use hand signs to uh, say what the temperature is. And the temperatures you're reading is actually just the compartment temperature, making sure it's within reason. It's There's, there's certain temperatures that you're supposed to maintain while you're in there so that it's comfortable for you to either train or sleep in. So moving on to A school. A school, you're still going to be standing watches. At least all the A schools I went to and all the A schools I heard about other people going to as well. Whether you're going to be Air Navy, Sea Navy, Engineering Navy, Ground Navy, it doesn't matter. You're, everywhere you go, you're going to stand watch. In the Navy, we stand the watch. So you're still going to have your normal rotations, and there's mostly it's for security and safety. In boot camp, it gets you more ready to going out to the fleet. You might as well consider A school your introduction to the fleet if, it not, if not boot camp. So you're going to be walking around making sure you know nothing's crazy happening in the middle of the night, nothing crazy happening in the middle of the day, make sure nothing's going on fire or making sure that no one's injured or hurt or anything like that. And also, if anyone's doing anything they shouldn't be doing, you could either stop them or if you don't feel comfortable, report it to a higher-ranking 
person, whether it be your staff member or something like that. But you're still going to be standing watch even in a school. Everywhere you go, you're going to be pretty much standing watch with the exception of few. For example, I don't know if recruiters stand watch because of their their duties at their station. So not every single station, sure. But I'm going to go ahead and make a good guess of 90% where you go, you're going to stand watch. And sometimes you might even stand something as simple as just sitting at a desk and answering a phone, or you might be going out and making rows. It really depends. It's as simple as someone's got to make sure everyone's safe or simple as just you got to answer the phone and direct the calls if necessary. It really varies. But that's where we get to move on when it talks about varying when we go on to the fleet. Now, I'm going to specifically talk about being on ships. My Myself, have only been on cruisers and destroyers, but they still cover the same amount of watches in general that you would see on most ships. So, for example, here you have this sailor who is standing topside rover. I know she's topside rover because once she's topside, she's standing on the topside and she's roving around. And you can tell because she has a rifle and she has a pistol. The way she's set up is so uh, that's one of the watch standards we use on every ship. And sometimes it changes. They say, like, hey, if you're the ship at the end of the pier, you have to stand a topside rover. And all the ships at the be closer to the entrance of the pier have to stand pier ECP, which we'll cover here in a second. But it changes. It, uh, they might say every ship has to stand it. So this is the one where you fully arm up and you rove topside. You're looking all around. And, you know, it's either one where you have a great exercise or it's really, really cold. You can see that she's wearing her parka, uh, even though this is a little bit dated because she's wearing blueberries and not the new ones. But it can't be that much older. And uh, or it's going to be really, really hot. Uh, sometimes they let you just walk around just your T-shirt and then the, the camo pants. Uh, if it's really, really hot, it's called deblousing. So, but regardless, you're, I usually try to do, make the best of it and just rove the entire time. Sometimes you see some lazy ones sitting over by the quarterdeck. And speaking of quarterdeck, we're going into the next area. So the quarterdeck here uh, for this picture, what a quarterdeck, like I said, is the main entrance and exit of a ship. Uh, you usually say that, for example, for a building as well. Like I said in that picture for boot camp, saying that it was inside a building, but we call them ships, right? Train like we fight, fight like we train. So what these, you can see sailors holding flowers in a backpack, leaving in their dress whites. They probably just came back from deployment in this picture. Is they're crossing what's called the brow. And that connects the pier to the ship. It's a little bridge, but it's called the brow. The brow connects to the quarterdeck. And on the quarterdeck, you have your officer of the deck, you have your pet officer of the watch, and you're the messenger of the watch. And there are the three watch standards that you'll see standing there unless the, the topside rubber is coming over to report to the officer of the deck. But they're the ones that are in control of the quarterdeck, the main entry and exit area of the ship. Some places uh, are pretty lenient about what you're wearing when you're on watch, so they'll let you wear NWUs, the camis, so which is way more comfortable. Some places say that during a certain time or all year round, you have to wear your dress uniform, which is the worst, honestly, and it racks up the bills of cleaning your dress uniform. Luckily, though, it's not too common. I do know that when my ship visited the Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, they required us to wear dress uniform while we were there at all times. I don't know if it's because of the situation that we were there or if Hawaii is that standard. However, just keep in mind, you might. that's why you're given two pairs of dress whites. Is, uh, and if you're wearing your dress blues, get them dry clean right afterwards because of the more expensive ones. But uh, regardless, uh, yeah, you're standing watch. And usually what you see in rotation for these watches that I'm talking about now is you'll see five-hour rotations with one four-hour rotation. So 7 to 12, 12 to 17, 17 to 22, those are all five-hour watches, then 22 to 2, which is a four-hour watch, and then 2 to 7. And then usually the two to, after the 2 to 7 is when duty sections turn over. Now, real quickly about duty sections. When you're in port, duty sections are duty days. So what that means is, say, for example, you're in four section, which a lot of ships are right now with the extra watch standards we're doing because of the Bonhomme Richard fire and we need to stand extra watch standards for fire safety watch. So we're in four section. That means every four days you have duty, which means for 24 hours you can't leave the ship. So on top of your normal work schedule, you're also on duty. So it means doing standing your watch if you have one or two watches if you have two, and also doing your job and showing up for sweepers, showing up for training, for drills, everything like that. So every for that example, it means every four days for 24 hours you cannot leave the ship. But that also means that if it's a Monday, then you show up on Monday morning for duty section turnover, do your work, stand your watch, go to bed on the ship, wake up the next day, turn over, and then you still have a work day. So you got to keep that in mind. And if and that because it's every four days, every five days, every six days, whatever duty section you're in, whether you're in four duty, five duty, six duty for that example, 
uh, it rotates. So it's not going to be like every Monday you have duty or anything like that. There is no seventh section to my knowledge. That would be horrible if it was. But it's supposed to rotate so that each week it's a little bit different. But that means, you know, if you have duty on Sunday, you're coming in Sunday morning. So you have – you get off on Friday, you have Saturday off, you come in on Sunday. Or you might have – Saturday duty, which is my personal the worst because Friday you don't have much time off and then Saturday you have duty and then Sunday you kind of like groggy from duty day and then you have to come back in on Monday. So just keep that in mind. That is something that happens in the fleet. It also happens in A schools and C schools as well when you're going to schools and you're going to have duty days, you know. But that transitions us to what is a watch station or watch rotation or duty section when it comes to being underway. Well, that really depends. It could be multiple of things. So, for example, let's say you're some sort of rate or NEC that requires you to stand watch in CIC or a combat information center like you can see in this picture. It's that room with all the radar screens you see in movies and stuff like that. Well, most part in most of these sections and anything that comes to CIC or engineering or bridge watch team or anything like that, you might be in four section duty as well. But that might mean you're going to be standing uh, a watch for a quarter of the day. So either you stand a six hour watch or you stand a three hour watch with nine hours off and then three hours watch, nine hours off and rotate. And then the six hour watch is you would have 18 hours off. It really depends on how you break it up, how your ship does it, maybe how your duty section works together or a watch team or whatever you wanna call it. But your day is gonna be consisted of your normal work day and then also your watch. So when you're underway, you're kind of always at work. There are, of course, times to relax and stuff like that. But what your watch is going to be, like, for example, when I say in port and I say you might be a topsider, well, you're most likely going to be standing petty officer of the watch or messenger of the watch or topside rover. And if you're an engineer, you're going to have an engineering watch, which is something in CCS or engineering duty officer or fire safety watch or uh, sounding and security, right? So same thing when it comes to underway. It depends on your rate. So lots of rates f fall into CIC. You might be an FC, an FCA. Uh, it, if you get qualified, ETs and ITs and ICs can stand in there as well. OS is stand there in a lot. EW rates like CTs, they are going to be standing there in a lot. So it really depends what your rate is where you're going to be standing. So, for example, if you're more so operations, which OS is stand under operation, but also operation might be deck. So you might be under... A boatswain's mate, or you might be a quartermaster, and you so you could be on the bridge. So you'd be you might be an E three, a QM three, or a QMSN, or a BMSN, or even undesignated, like this gentleman here driving the ship. I don't know if he's undesignated, but I'm saying, for example, he is like an E three. Like he, I don't see any collar devices on him, so he might be E one, E two, E three, and you get qualified to drive the ship, which is really freaking cool. Um, you're not going to be in charge of where it goes. It's more so. There's going to be uh, an officer who's in charge of that, if not the captain, and you get to drive it around. And it's same thing, you're going to have a rotation. You might be driving for three hours in the day from you know 1,200 to 1,500, and then you drive three hours in the middle of the night from zero to zero 0,300. So you got to be careful of how you're doing your sleep and your other duties and responsibilities. So you also might be a bridge watch standard, and that could be a lot of different things. It might be a bridge watch standard underway, or it could be a bridge watch standard during a special evolution, which it could be anyone at that point. If you're in engineering, you might be doing sounding and security all night on top of your maintenance, making sure everything's running properly, taking gauges and whatnot. And then at this point, anyone else could be also topside manning uh, 240, you know? So, uh, but this situation here is most likely in uh, one of two scenarios. One, they're probably doing uh, getting underway or pulling into port. And so you man up extra security because you're going to be in waters where you kind of de-arm everything and then you have this setup kind of a situation. There might be small boats that come in. So this is more for extra security and stuff like that. You're not worried about small boats in the middle of the Atlantic because boats can't cross the sea. Uh, oceans can. No one in a canoe is going to swim up to you in the middle of the Pacific. Uh, but you have to worry about stuff like that. So you might be someone who's topside or doing something like that. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up the idea of watch standing and something and duty days. Something that really wasn't explained to me by my recruiter. And it actually makes up probably 25% of your career, really. If you're in for four years, there might be a whole year's worth of that career where you're actually standing watch, like hours-wise, if you think about it. Not in reality, it's probably more like 10%. But it's a big part of it, getting watch qualifications, standing watch, and you know just duty days and everything like that. It wasn't really explained to me, so I thought it'd be something I'd break it down, just expectations. You're not just going to show up to a 9-to-5 job and then have weekends off, and, and with the exception of days that you're underway. 
Um, you're going to have duty days, and even underway, you're going to be busy. You're going to be doing your maintenance still or your normal work, and then also standing watch. So hope that clarifies some information and gets you more prepared for the fleet. Uh, if you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments below. Hoo-yah, Navy.